Hi, and welcome to Mental Health Mondays. I am Carrie Viscalonis, founder and CEO of Reset Brain and Body, an integrative mental health care practice located in and around Metro Detroit. Okay, so this week we are touching on a sensitive subject for many, and that is that we are talking about bodies. Now, moms in particular are used to people commenting nonstop about their bodies, right? When you're pregnant, oh, how far along are you? Oh, you don't look that big. Oh, you must be popping at any moment. People always have something to say about our bodies. And then once we have our babies, there's so much commentary about getting our bodies back and bouncing back after baby and fix that pelvic floor and get your abs back and fit back into your clothes pre-baby. And then 10 years later, five years later, it's no, 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 you're not supposed to age. You are supposed to defy gravity. Your boobs will stay up here, your stomach will stay flat, and you will continue to fit into your pre-baby clothes, not to mention the fact that they were 15 years ago when your hormones were totally different, you weren't in pre-menopause, and you haven't just lived a decade of trying to raise children. Mamas, man, we put so much pressure on ourselves. So first, I just want to validate this non-stop commentary that we get about our bodies. And it can be from loved ones or complete strangers. And gosh, that is exhausting. But more so than that, we live in diet culture. There is the most incredible book that woke me up to my own plate with dieting and body awareness called The Anti-Diet by Christy Harrison. I will mention it in the comments as well. If you have not read or listened to this book, I strongly encourage you to do so because even if you've never struggled with a full-blown eating disorder in the past, what most of us have dealt with is some type of disordered eating and exercise mindset. The constant need to restrict and shrink our bodies is a type of disordered eating and dieting. This orthoexia is something that is not quite yet in the DSM, a diagnosable mental illness, but it is very much alive and well. A constant fixation with food, calorie intake, exercising enough, I'm no longer wearing my Apple Watch because man, seeing how many steps I was taking and closing my rings and comparing my workouts to other people was becoming this own type of obsession. Diet culture has capitalized on this competitive spirit. There's a quote and I'm sure I'm gonna butcher it right now, but it's something like, learning to love yourself is the ultimate act of rebellion, specifically in a capitalistic society that feeds off of our need to spend more money to improve and shrink ourselves. If you look back at all the money that you have spent in the last, let's say 10 years, on ways to get a bikini body, whatever the heck that's supposed to mean, think about what you could do with that money. You could have gone to graduate school, <laughs> right? You could have saved up for kids' colleges. And I don't mean this out of shame. I mean this out of like, we so unconsciously do this because it's what we're told that we're supposed to be doing. When we wake up to the fact that we are a subject in diet culture, we are a pawn, we are a puppet within diet culture made to feel inadequate purposefully so that we will continue to spend money well, then we can start to be mindful of our choices and be more intentional about, well, how do I want to show up in this world? And actually, it feels good to take up more space and not continually get smaller in this world that already oppresses women, that already tells women, no, 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 you stay over there. There's so much history in this, and I... I encourage you again to do your own research into it, but there is so much cultural history, 
with why diet culture exists and why it is ubiquitous in so many other things, in the feminist movement, in colonization in general. But once you understand that, rage is typically the first reaction, right? Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this has been happening. This is horrible. I need to do something about it. And usually, you know, we start tearing everything down. Like, I'm just I'm canceling all my gym membership subscriptions and I'm eating all the cake and all the french fries because, you know, screw the man. We kind of rebel, right? We, we want to defy everything. But we have to come back to a place of like, well, okay, what does this mean for me? Because actually, maybe I love going to the gym every day. Maybe I love lifting weights. Maybe I love eating salads. And that's what's most important. Women, anyone. In order for us to love our body, to accept our body, to make peace with our body, we have to first get to know our bodies. We have spent so much of our life disconnecting. Any of you that have gone through infertility, you know what I'm talking about. Sexual trauma, you know what I'm talking about. Even injuries, physical trauma, you know what I'm talking about. We've cut ourselves off from the neck down. We disassociate, we disengage with our body. We don't trust our body, we don't like our body. We wanna pretend like our body does not exist. It is just getting me from point A to point B. But we need to get to know this body because in this body holds so much wisdom. In this body, it tells us what foods nourish us, what foods we need biochemically on a given moment. Our bodies tell us what type of movement fuels us and makes us feel alive and not where we're punishing ourselves. This body holds so much wisdom, but we have to learn to love her through just listening to her. Not listening to the commentary, not listening to the outsiders, not listening to your social media feed that tells you to eat a keto diet. That may not be for you. Not listening to the ad campaigns and the fitness coach and the Instagram guru person that tells you how to do squats to make your butt lift higher, they may not be for you. You need to know what your body wants and needs and the only way to do that is to cut off the outside influence and turn within, to learn how to listen and trust her. So often when people start to engage in this intuitive type of living with their bodies, they say, oh my gosh, well, I'm just gonna eat French fries all day. Yeah, you might, which first of all, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but then eventually you'll realize like, oh, I think I'm just rebelling. I think I'm just like mad that I've deprived myself of French fries for my whole life. And wait, actually, I think all this grease doesn't feel good. And then you come into an equilibrium with your body where there's a give and a take and there's a respect and there's an honoring. You're not doing the HIIT workouts or the six mile runs because you feel like you have to. You're choosing things because you want to and you love to. You're not working out because you wanna burn an X amount of calories so you can eat noodles today. You're working out for your mental health or because it's your me time that day or because it makes you feel strong and confident. You're eating salads because it allows you to poop. You're eating gluten-free because you don't like the way bread makes you feel and it makes you feel puffy and that doesn't feel good on your joints or it makes your periods worse. When we start to have the outcome that has been passed down to us through diet culture, that all of my action must equate to shrinking my body, then we open ourselves up to having a more reciprocal relationship with our body that allows us to operate with more choice and freedom and fluidity, more playfulness, spontaneity to eat a hamburger tomorrow and french fries the next day and pizza the next day and then green smoothies for four days because you're like, I just don't feel that great and this feels better. There's no hard and fast rules. There's no 80-20 bullshit. 
It simply is tuning in every day, every moment. What does my body need? This lovely vehicle, what does she need? There's a belief out there that we choose these bodies that we come into this world into. Because these bodies are specific to our path and our purpose on earth. What is your story with your body and why is your body part of your purpose? What has she done to make you who you are? Why is this all part of your journey? Ask yourself that. Respect her, honor her, listen to her. And then you start the journey of intuitive eating, intuitive movement, intuitively checking in. When I was pregnant with my second son, I can't really remember, I remember feeling in a funk and I sat down and meditated. I was like, what does my body need? And I intuitively came up with a meal plan. Okay, eat it for seven days. And afterwards, because I was curious, I was like, I wonder how many calories that was. Because I was still a little bit stuck on diet culture. And it was the exact amount of calories and nutritional makeup that I needed for my pregnant body at that time. My body just knew. And it was food that like I really didn't think I liked. <laughs> but it felt really good. We have all the wisdom within us. You don't need it from the outside. That's kind of a theme here, if you've been listening long enough. I'm not telling you to love your body today or even to accept it. What I'm asking you to do is just simply start listening to it. That is the way forward. All right. Much love and peace. If you have comments, questions, drop them in. Okay, take care.